So Simon of Cyrene, everybody knows the story. There's never been a movie about Jesus that would leave this character out, I guarantee you. But if I mention somebody to my audience, remember Mark says in chapter 13, let the reader understand. He's addressing the reader. And if he mentions in this by the way style, and they compelled, and I'll talk about the Greek word, a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who is coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. One verse. That one verse tells me that Mark is not mythological. Mark is theological, but he's not mythological. I don't think Mark makes up a single character unless it's the guy running naked in the garden. It's possible that could be a literary figure, right, for somebody. But other times, you know, if it's blind Bartimaeus, you get the name and on and on and on. And especially when you say the father. Now notice Matthew comes along, I think much later, and this is his source. And so he does have the Greek word compelled. And this is the official Greek word that you've heard about since Sunday school days, if you were raised Christian. Oh, the Romans could compel someone to do something officially for them. But you can look it up, it's technical, and it's used in all sorts of ways, but it's a very legal term. So Mark knows that. And you can stop somebody and have them do something. Jesus refers to this when he says, if somebody compels you to walk a mile, to carry baggage or whatever, agree, go two, go two miles. So we call it the second mile. It's become proverbial. And so, but to mention the father, so Matthew, he's like, ah, I don't know who that is. Alexander and Rufus. Yeah. Well, clearly Mark thinks you're going to know these guys. Is that pretty clear to you? I mean, I would say the chances that Mark made up a couple kids are just, it's not worth talking about. Now, if somebody wants to take that position and there are beloved colleagues of mine who take that position, that's fine. You know, what can I do? It's all just made up. It's just sort of like, a, you know, King Arthur tales or something. I don't think it is that. Uh, and then Luke, he doesn't use compelled, probably because of his pro-Roman sympathies. Literally, it's it's translated in the RSVCs, but epi lambanomai just means kind of laid hold on. It's like if I grab you and go, hey, Come here, and I pull you. I epilambanoed you. I pulled you in. I said, hey, you got uh, help carry this cross. Now, I don't think you say no, but notice he does say coming in from the country. Notice he got that from Mark. And laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. So there. So this is derivative from this, I think, and the people are dropped. Now, What's really nice is we get where he's from. And we do know that in Acts 6, verse 8, there's the synagogue of the Cyrenians. And then there's a Lucius of Cyrene mentioned in Acts 13, 1. And I'm going to show you an article after I finish these slides by a scholar who, and I'll give you the article. I'll, I'll upload it to Patreon because it's going to be a thrill to read. He shows that Rufus is most likely a Roman citizen because of the name Rufus. And Alexander, of course, is honoring a Hellenistic ruler. Very common name. So where am I sitting here? This was in 2005. I'm sitting at Hebrew University Archaeology Lab, which is internal to the university. All the Masada stuff is stored here. And he, you know, Hebrew University is kind of the official university, of course, founded in the early part of the century, even before the state of Israel was established. And this is at Mount Scopus, which is the graduate division, not the undergrads, which is in the new city. So it's Mount Scopus right next north of the Mount of Olives. So here I'm looking at their catalog and taking a few pictures. This is Tom Powers, who I credit with 
reminding us of a discovery made in 1941 of an ossuary we're going to look at. And he wrote this much, much later. I think he began doing this around the year 2000 and, and after because he could not believe that nobody's talking about this. So he started doing his own research. It turns out there's academic articles on it. I'm going to give you the actual articles to read. Yeah, but here's Tom talking to me in the lab. We're getting ready to see the ossuary. And here's the ossuary. Beautifully preserved, lovely, no decorations, just inscriptions, wonderful lid on top of it. And I'm going to go over the inscriptions. You can't see them really well in the pictures. But there's an inscription on the lid, and there's an inscription on this side, and an inscription on the other side. And here's what they say. On the back is uh, basically it says Simon, Simon or Simon Shimon, Ale, which is the first three letters of Alexander. See here, look, whoever inscribed it thought he would say uh, Alexander of Simon. And this is what you do with ushuaries. So uh, it means Simon's the father, Alexander's the son. So here we have a Simon with a son named Alexander. That alone probably isn't going to get it for us, but it's interesting. You know, an ossuary with a Simon. Uh, on the front is green chalk, and that's what you see here. That's actually incised a little bit, but it's outlined by this green chalk and you the green chalk is being faded right here. Can you see maybe if you zoomed in, you could see traces of some of the letters. And it says Alexander of Simon. Okay. Then on the lid, and this is what made it, Alexander, this is the Ashway of Alexander, who's the son of Simon, right? But when it does say Simon a couple times, you get the idea that maybe Simon could be in this Ashway as well. And several have suggested that, that it's a father-son Ashway. And then it has his name again, and he's from this, this is a problematic spelling but it's basically uh, Kurenit, so the Cy the Cyrene or something like that. Well, when people saw that, you'd think they would have gone wild and said, "Wow, this is Simon of Cyrene and his son Alexander." And Rufus might have been the other younger son, and he didn't die yet, so he he uh, he would have his own ashwar. But it's not in the tomb. Now I'm going to show you the article on the tomb. There's a bunch of other names. As I recall, there's 11 ossuaries and nine are inscribed, which is very high, very high ratio. So here's what it looks like. We were able to look and do it. We didn't take any DNA samples, but look right here. You see that? I guarantee if we went there today, it would still be there. I'm going to see if I can take my tour there, but I think they're going to say no. We don't do group tours. So pictures probably all you're going to get. But I, I think it would be cool if we could see it. I mean, be a first, you know, to get to see. So uh, this is on our list for the future, for sure. If you can do DNA on an identifiable possible person mentioned in the New Testament. You know, James is another one that is disputed. I don't know anyone's disputing this. You know why? Because nobody even talks about it. I've never seen this discussed generally speaking. I don't know why. Here are the main articles that I'm going to show you. So you'll have this slide and I will, um, I think I'll upload this slideshow to the Patreon so that you can, well, it'll be in the video, but I think I'll upload it where you can look at it more closely. So Tom Powers brought it to life in 203 by publishing it in Bar Magazine. And then Avigad, major Israeli archaeologist, wrote the main article. Very nice article. I'll show it to you. And this I just found 
in published in 210, Richard Westfall, who would ever find in a journal called in Germany, Historia Zeitschrift für Alte Geschichte. Uh, Simon of Serenia, a Roman citizen. So I'm going to give you that article too. It's very technical, very dense, but just utterly fascinating. I just I just found this recently. Now I want to highly recommend this book. Richard Balcom is a wonderful British scholar. And he wrote this as a believing Christian trying to say, wait a minute, you're dismissing all this gospel evidence too readily. And he's trying to push eyewitness ideas, which I don't necessarily push the way he does. But it's essentially a study of all the names, of all these names <clears throat> that we have in the New Testament and who they might be and what we know about them and so forth. He doesn't make a big deal about Simon of Cyrene and Alexander, uh, but he does mention them. He doesn't mention the ossuary, so he probably doesn't even know about it again. I mean, it's that one article in Bar, and then the scholarly article. 